All we have here is the TH3D V6 hot end. It will come in a package like this, and we're gonna show you how to put it all together. We have our tool set here. This is just a standard precision tool set. You can use Allen keys if you wish. You're gonna start by unpacking your hot end, and it's going to come in a bunch of different baggies. You're going to have your 24 volt fan with shroud, your 12 volt fan with shroud, there's a bag of parts with the pneumatic fittings, the heater block and the heat brake, and the actual cold end heat sink. You'll also have a 12 and 24 volt heater cartridge. Bag with the included nozzles, there's a 0.4 brass, 0.6 brass, and then the same sizes in steel. The steel are good for printing abrasive. We have two thermistors and your PTFE tubing. Take your cold end heat sink and screw the heat brake into the bottom here and it will stop and this does not go all the way in the bottom of the heat break right before the transition zone which you can see is where it's going to stop so you have this little part here sticking out and this is what's going to go into your heater block fit the thermistor and the heater cartridge so the thermistors are just generic 100k thermistors so you can take one of the two and the thermistor goes in the little hole by this little hex screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our bits out here. I put the 2.0 into my driver here, and we're going to back this screw out just a little bit, just so we can get the wires underneath. So you're gonna take the bulb of the thermistor and stick it into the hole, and then put the wires underneath the screw. You can kind of push them underneath there, and then you're going to want to gently tighten down the screw. You're not gonna tighten down all the way just until you feel it start having some friction because if you tighten it too far, it's going to crush the insulation that's on these leads and the thermistor is not going to read correctly. Once you have the thermistor installed, we can go ahead and put our heater cartridge in depending on what voltage system you're using. You put the voltage in that matches your printer. In this case, this is going on a 12 volt machine. So I'm going to unravel the wires here. Grab your heater cartridge and put it into the block. And it's going to stick out a little bit on each end, as you can see here. You wanna have it centered, so the metal casing will stick out a little bit and then tighten down your screw. It may be handy to have a set of pliers as you do need to get some torque on this and tighten it up until the heater cartridge does not move when you pull on it. So that's the assembly for the heater block. You can bend your leads carefully up because we're gonna have all the wires going up. Screw your heat brake into your heater block, but not all the way. We're just gonna give it a couple turns. You see it's not all the way in because we want to leave some room for the nozzle. So grab the nozzle that you're going to put into your hot end. And I usually run the 0.4 millimeter brass. So I'm gonna take the 0.4 millimeter brass and I'm going to screw this in until it is flush with the block. Now once it's flush with the block, you're gonna go ahead and give it about a half turn so there's a gap, and then tighten the heat brake up to the nozzle. So this is the assembly of the hot end in general. At this point, you can fit this to your machine, and then you're going to wanna to heat this up to 260C and then tighten this nozzle with a wrench against the heat brake. And what this will do is this will seal it and make it so that filament does not leak. For the PTFE tubing, you can take this fitting here and screw it into the top. Your PTFE tube, this is the standard included PTFE. It'll go all the way down in almost to the top of the heat break there. You'll feel it catch. These do not go all the way into the heat block because these are all metals. So you can take this and push it in and you'll feel it snap when it hits the heat break. You see how it stopped and then it kind of snapped in. Now I know this is in the heat break all the way. So you can push it in and then tighten this up with a set of pliers. And this is how you assemble the hot end. If you have a silicone sock, you can put the silicone sock over the block but this is ready to mount to your printer now. If you ever have to replace anything, you just unscrew this screw for the thermistor and unscrew this screw for the heater cartridge. 
and it's that simple. You're obviously going to have to print a mount, and most of the mounts will lock into this collar up here to hold the hot end. Uh, the last thing you want to do, depending on your mount, some mounts don't have a spot for this included shroud. Some people will use these, some don't. It depends on your mount. But if you do, this just snaps on, just like that, and that's all there is to it. So this is your final assembled hot end. Like I said, you're going to want to cable manage this. So when you put this on your mount, I recommend just grabbing some nylon zip ties and zip tie the thermistor to the heater cartridge wires here and then route these up with the rest of the hot end wires, like for your fans and everything. And you do not have to use this included fan. Most of these CR10 mounts have an option to use the 40 millimeter included fan as part of a duct on the mount, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're using the titanium one instead of the steel one, you would just put the titanium one in instead of the steel one when you assemble. If you ever need to change the nozzle, you're gonna to wanna to heat it up to about 260 C, and then take the nozzle out while it's hot because it will then make the plastic molten and you can change it. You always wanna change your nozzles hot. You can just simply unscrew it and put the other nozzle in and repeat the same process. I'll usually back it out a little bit and make it flush, give it a half turn so you got a little gap and then tighten the heat brake to the nozzle and then make sure you heat it to 260C and then tighten down it. You're not putting a ton of force on this. You're just gonna take about what you can do with a one finger in terms of torque. You're not trying to wrench this down because you can snap the heat brake or even the nozzle if you're using the brass ones. You're probably not gonna snap it with the steel because they're so hard, but the brass, I have seen people twist the brass off in the block. And that's all there is to it. Um, this is a very modular system. If you have the Volcano upgrade kit, the only difference is instead of using this block and this nozzle, you use the block and nozzle from the Volcano Kit, but the process is exactly the same. You can even use your existing heater cartridge and thermistor from your stock machine with this block. You don't even have to change any of this out. You can use your standard thermistor and heater cartridge and there's no soldering. Now I do recommend you solder the wires when you splice these into your existing hot end cable assembly. That's all there is to it. The main things are make sure you don't over tighten the screw that holds the thermistor in because you can break through the insulation on the thermistor leads. And what's gonna happen is it's going to short out and not give you correct temperature. Hopefully this has been helpful and demystifies the process of assembling this. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact our support at support at th3dstudio.com. That's it, thank you.